Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content, playing a team centered all around Blastoise. So here we go. Uh, I did take a little bit of inspiration for this team. Of course, I've got to give a shout out to my good friend Jamie Boyd, who I played in the International Challenge Players Cup four qualifiers over this past weekend who played a very similar team to this and uh, I'll link Jamie's socials down below if you don't know them already because I'm sure he will be maybe featuring the team over on his YouTube channel I haven't spoke to him but uh, I'm sure he will do anyway the team as I say is centered around Blastoise we've got the Incineroar Zashin going to be our restricted in this team it makes a lot of sense Gives a lot of room to the other Pokemon like the Blastoise that you can go for. The, the Gigantamax or the Rillaboom if you choose or the Lander. So it gives a lot of room around those other Pokemon. It's actually an amazing Pokemon. Probably the best restricted that we've got uh, in the format really if we look at it on a statistics kind of point of view. And, the, and tournament finishes and other things like that. So really nice Pokemon. I think the team in general has rounded up quite nicely. Got a lot of synergy. Got a little bit of an issue with Trick Room, of course we have, but there are ways around that and it's just approaching different matches. Hopefully we can get into that in some of the matches today as we do feature it as always. If not, I'll talk through it as we go through the episode, so you've got to get a little bit of a gist on how to approach those matchups. Pokebased is down below in the description and as always we'll throw up a rental at the end of the episode if you guys would like to try this team out for yourselves, so sit back relax enjoy the episode i hope you do as always and uh, we'll jump into our first opponent of the episode okay so up first today we have a team of kyoga zapdos entai shininja chansey and gothitelle god <laughs> help us all right well uh, mm. when you see the first three you're like yeah this is fine then you see that third three you're like great this is gonna be horrendous okay well I think we need to utilize Blastoise in this one for sure. Um, utilize a Lecky because it helps us to pivot out at least against the Gothitelle. Um, huh, I don't know what to do against Chansey because Chansey, I mean, we have Sacred Sword, which definitely helps us out in that respect. So um, I don't know if I want to lead Zacian though because the anti. Uh, it might be better to lead Blastoise. Zacian and mm, I'm thinking Landorus as well because then we can kind of bait in if we see the Zapdos lead from my opponent if they go down that route, which I don't know if they're going to. Rillaboom would have been great here again, but at the same time, we can only bring four Pokemon. Um, and this is going to be horrendous, but it's going to be uh, interesting at least for the viewers at home to see my reaction to potentially Chansey coming out here at turn one and uh yeah look at those black eyes black eyes evil black eyes right well what are we looking at i mean we can shell smash for sure turn one i think we're in a place because they're gonna snarl right they're gonna snarl and they're gonna uh, mm, mm, mm. the problem is they could go trick room as well they could go trick room I think we may be better off going for a bull switch out onto the uh, the Gothitelle. Maybe not shell smashing. I mean, we could shell smash, but then if we shell smash, they snarl. We're not in a good place. I think they switch out the Entai, though. That's the thing. I think they switch the Entai out. But what are you bringing in for the Entai? Uh, Shininja, Chansey, one of those two are coming in, I think, if we see the trick we've got. Do we shell smash? I think we shell smash. I think we do. I think, uh, like, our, our, our lives are on the line right now. Okay, well, we see an ally switch. That's that's all right. That's, all, it's, that's actually all right. That's actually okay. Because we get some decent damage onto the anti. If we see a snarl, then that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, We have to bring in Landorus. We cannot bring in Zash in here. We just can't can't be trapped and we can't risk getting Zashian taken down by uh, a straight sacred fire that could potentially come out from the end time. Let's see. Is that... Yeah, there's a sacred fire. Yeah, no, Zashian would not have appreciated that. Lander has taken that pretty comfortably though. No burn, which makes things so much more... Ah, oh, better. Okay. Well, we're off to not a bad start. Not a bad start at all, my friends. Um, now, Blastoise... 
activating that white herb, getting rid of those defense drops, and we're sitting on plus two across the board. So we're sitting with this match in the palm of our hands. Now, all we've got to contend with right now is does my opponent, does my opponent uh, ally switch here? I think they may, may do. We could potentially just U turn and double up into the Goth Hotel. Let's do that. Let's go for the Goth. Let's not worry about the Entai right now. Let's see what they do. And if they ally switch, they get super punished for it. Means we get uh, Landers off the field as well. Means there's no Trick Room going up this turn. If they don't, then we hopefully should get the Goth Hotel. Yeah, between, between the combination of attacks. Um, and then we start the residual chip as well, which is always, always, always very good. Ooh, there's a cheeky protect from that Entai. I'm going to try and see a trick room, I think, here. Let's see. Is this going to be enough? Plus two. It should do an absolute chunk. It depends if it's buried or not. If we don't proc a bury, we've got it. We've got it. No bury and the U-turn going to be enough. There we go. All right. This is how we deal with this sort of stuff. Okay. <laughs> Right, sitting in a nice spot now. Got rid of the, the annoyance of the Gothitelle. You turn on Landorus is very underrated, I think, as well. Especially in these sort of situations. So we'll get Aleki in. Um, and we're sitting in a pretty nice spot now, to be honest. And the residual damage coming onto the Entai. We'll go down to another Vault Switch if you want to go down that route. But I'd imagine something like... The chance he will probably pop rear its head up. Yeah, rear its ugly head up. I do like Chansey. It's not ugly. It's just a pain to deal with. Uh, we'll Vol switch because we need Zash in onto the field as soon as possible. And we'll go for a cannonade into the Blissey. Try and get some damage onto it. Because it is going to start minimizing. I am 100% sure of that. Yeah, and if we can force a Shininja, if it is in the back, if we can force a Shininja onto the field as well, that would be very useful because uh, the um, the residual damage will take it down. It doesn't matter about Wonder God in, in that situation. So we've got at least two turns where uh, we'll be able to um, to utilize that. We get Zashin onto the field, get that Intrepid Sword boost, which is nice. It'll be interesting to see how much this does. I'm not expecting a lot, but... It is Chansey after all. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad, is it? Probably in Sacred Sword range. Soft boiled. There we go. No minimize just yet, which is, yeah, we don't really mind about the minimize at the moment anyway. Let's see what my opponent brings in. Because I think a is a Behemoth Blade going to be better than a Sacred Sword at this point? Probably. Oh, it's, it's Ogre. Big Ogre. Okay. Well, a cannonade just got boosted up. Um, mm, mm. I don't think the chance he's got protect, and then Aleki just wins this game for us, to be honest. So I think we're better off just doubling into Chansey. I don't like. There's no way it's got protect. No way. <laughs> if Chansey pulls out protect, I'm gonna be like, oh my god. <laughs> I don't think it has room for it though, because you need softball, you need minimize. You need probably something like uh, Toxic or something else. I don't know. One of those other annoying moves that he uses. And then and then uh, Seismic Toss. Does it still get Toxic? I have no idea. Anyway, let's see how much this does in the rain. Plus two. Boosted. Boost. Right. Hopefully. Zashin. Come on, Zashin. You're going to be like, you're the best restricted. Come on. You can prove that you can do this. Yes! Okay, Chansey gone. That that Kyogre's not even going to be a problem anymore. It's fine. Max Lightning. That could be a little bit of an issue, but we should take it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Zashin lives to see another day, because we'll be able to sub the next turn. And that was a crit. Okay. That's a little bit unfortunate. Um, But still, not the end of the world. Because the rain dish will come in a little bit handy there, I guess. Uh, but we just need to stall out. Well, we don't need to stall out. We just need to try and get Regilecki onto the field for free. Especially with the electric train going up now. I mean, it's, it's kind of done for my opponent already. We'll get some last ditch damage off with a Scald into the Kyogre. Uh, a burn would be obviously a bonus. But we'll protect Old Zashin here. 
doing nothing, doing nothing to this massive whale as we get to the sub up. I think after the Zation here, maybe? Probably the more threatening thing, but no, they continue to just want to target down the Blastoise. So we get a free sub, and uh, we are going to get Aleki onto the field. And we got the Sash as well, so we're kind of in a nice spot to close this one up. Always hate these sort of games, you know, when you go up against the Gothitelle Chansey. It's not normally Gothitelle Chansey though, is it? I don't know. I've never played too many of them. We'll go for the Behemoth because it's a bit more powerful, I think. Um, I need to move my head out of the way. We've got Electro Web, Thunderbolt. I should probably be a little more to the side of my camera. I should just, just be there and then I'll be able to see the moves. Thunderbolt coming in, doing some nice damage. Getting a crit. Oh, so that's pretty, that's pretty uh, fortunate for us. For sure, but I think because they revert the next turn, we'll, it, it didn't really matter too much. We're going to get this double up here. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, we would have got it the next turn, even if we didn't get the crit, so it doesn't really matter. Not that I need to justify it against this sort of team. <laughs> anyway, good game to my opponent. Please, we got the, the, the W going into this first one with the uh, the Blastoise team. Uh, very nice, and uh, obviously I'm sure a lot of you will appreciate going up against a team like that and coming out on the better side of it, because a lot of the time they're not the most fun teams to uh, play against. Blastoise, Blastoise doing some work there for us, uh, kicking some butt. So really nice, good game to my opponent as always, and we'll jump into the next game of the episode. Okay, up next we have an Amoongus Grimmsnarl, Shadow Rider Calyrex. Uh, Venusaur, Torkoal, and Thunderous Incarnate. So, uh, nice build. Again, it's strange not to see Ndidi support here, the redirection with the Calyrex, but I guess with the screen support, you kind of really don't necessarily need it. And you've got redirection with the Amoongus anyway, which helps out. Double Grass here, though, and the Sun make it difficult for Blastoise to perform, for sure. But um, something like uh, Zacian has a good time without the Torkoal on the field. Um... Venusaur is a little bit of a problem as well as the Calyrex actually, so we're going to list them off there, but um, we do have ways to get around it, you know, Incineroar are going to be nice here, got to be careful around the Thunderous though, of course, because we don't want to proc the, um, the old Defiant ability just without any necessary meaning, I like, I like Landorus in this match as well, you know, I like Landorus and I like um, Incineroar, but Incineroar is probably the better one to kind of go with initially, I think we'll go Zashin, Consider all. And do we bring do we bring Blastoise to this one? Or do we bring Lando? I feel like I want to bring Blastoise to every game because it's just such a good Pokemon. The residual damage is insanely good. But I don't know if it's really the right call here. Um I feel like Lando's just a better call in general. A better call in general. Like Blastoise isn't really doing anything. I mean, you can get Decent-ish damage onto the Torko, but most of the time when that's going to be on the field, the sun's going to be up, so we're not going to be hitting as hard. Residual damage, it will help, of course, but we've got to be, I think, a bit more direct against these sort of Pokemon than, than passive, and we can't really play the slow game because they're so offensive, you know. Um, but we are seeing Grimmsnarl and Andres come out from my opponent, so not bad, not bad from us. We're going to see a reflect from my opponent at uh, turn one. We could max Aleki, to be honest here, you know. Um, Max Aleki isn't a bad option. I don't I honestly don't think it's a bad option at all. Where we could go for the Axe Lightning into Thunderous, and we could go for a Behemoth Blade as well. Um, we could get rid of the Grim Star, which might be not a bad play as well, you know. Oh, we could sub. We could sub and go for it the next turn. It's likely they're going to attack into us, though. Um, I think we got Behemoth Blade. I think Behemoth Blade. Because once the Thunderous is out of the way, like, it frees up Incineroar and Landorus, like, to come in and out a lot easier, you know? Um, so, primarily, once we get rid of the Defiant Abuser in Thunderous, things should get a bit easier for us. I'm thinking we're going to see a reflect here, but we could see a light screen. Either way, we kind of get a payoff from uh, our bigger sacks. So, yeah, it uh, makes sense. We're probably going to see an airstream. I imagine that's the first thing on my opponent's kind of radar here. Um, 
Let's hope it's not one of these eject buttons. Grim snarls. They don't want to lose Aleki too early. Okay, it's a light screen. That's kind of fine. Are they a salt fest then? It makes me think that they may not be. Okay, well that does absolutely ridiculous damage. We're going to get the knockout onto it next turn. Especially if Aleki doesn't get hit here. Um, and if they don't got Airstream, then I mean we've got this, haven't we? Behemoth Blade coming out. This is going to do a ton of damage as well. Especially with no reflector. Plus one. Wow. Wow, this is why... <laughs> this is why Zacian's so good, you know. Uh, and just turn one, got rid of the, uh, the Thunderous. It's not a Soul Fest. We can confirm... I can definitely confirm that it's not a Soul Fest. Would have taken way less damage. We're not like Magnet. We're... we're um... Sash. Okay, Calyrex coming in. We got the Electric Terrain up. They've got a Reflect up. Um... I think we take an attack. We take an attack from Calyrex with both, to be honest. We could just play it safe, though, and bring something like Incineroar onto the field now. It's going to eat up those attacks way easier. They can't max. I think the big worry here would be, like, Scary Face potentially coming out from um, Grimmsnarl into Regieleki. I mean, we move second. But, like, if they haven't got that, then the Calyrex is going down in two hits, for sure. Because we've got the, the Sash. You know, they've got to double into us this turn. They're guaranteed to get rid of us. But, you know, we're going to get a lot of damage off in return for that. So, yeah, I really do think Aleki is, like, one of those really underrated Pokemon. That, like, for maxing, especially. I know it's not underrated, but it is a very underrated uh, Pokemon in regards to uh, how well it can perform when it does max. It's just so oppressive, you know. Um, fake Tears coming out, which is interesting. So that means there's probably no scary face from the, uh, the the good old Grim Snarl. We can just max lightning and just protect everything on the field. Just go for a fake out into the Grim Snarl here. Just prevent it from being able to attack. Remove the Calyrex. It probably, it probably does go protect here. No? No. I think my opponent's just kind of uh, coming to the conclusion that it's going to be very quick. And uh, Aleki doing so much work. And this is what I mean about like Reggie Aleki in some sometimes in some situations where it's just it's just so overpowering because you haven't got the speed control out on the field, kind of manipulating your bone position to get to a point where you can get speed control. You you might end up losing too many Pokemon in the process, and then it gets, it gets very difficult, doesn't it, from that point on? Um, all right, well Aleki done all the work we need. The Amoongus coming onto the field, that's super fine. We can Volt Switch out into the Grim Snarl. Um, and just go for a flare blitz. We're not worried about spall because of the electric terrain as well. So it played out pretty perfectly here. Um, I'm just going for the, the tricky old protect. Uh, but we'll get Zation on the field. And then we can go for uh, just a sub. Because they're likely going to go for a spirit break, I think, from the, uh, the Grim Snow into Zation. But they don't really have any ways to, to deal with Zacian now. Uh, I mean, we don't even need to sub at the moment. We can just double into Amoongus the next turn. Yeah, knowing that they've got Spirit Break, it's not really going to affect us too much at all. Um, there are only there are only means to um, attack us. Amoongus goes down, and then we can just deal with Grimstone. We may see a forfeit here. We may do. But um, opponent might play it out. You never know. But... Yeah, it just goes to show, like, the combination of these, like, fast, f offensive Pokemon can be used pretty well sometimes. And uh, it's nice to be able to feature stuff like this on the channel, of course. Um, and we do pick up the win. So, very good game to Joa. Joa. There we go. Um, and we've probably got time for one more, friend. So, we'll jump in and have another one today. We have Lorenzo playing a team of Eveltal, Regieleki, Porygon2, Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, and Metagross. So, really nice looking team here from Lorenzo. Utilizing the Eveltal and um, obviously got nice speed control with the Regieleki. Kind of instant speed control with the Electro Web there. They've got the Trick Room switch as well, which probably helps out the Metagross to no end and Pokemon like Porygon2 and... Uh, Incineroar as well, um, they've got screen support, which is going to help them massively in this match as well. Uh, okay, what are we going to do? I think Regieleki is good for us because it does give us a bit of pressure for the Valtor, at least turn one, you know. Um, 
Land Arrest isn't bad as well because it gives us a little bit of an option against the, the opposing Regilecki. The, the Metagross is a bit awkward, I will say, um, for sure. Um, but I mean, if they go Trick Room, then Blastoise is a good option, uh, to be honest. Like, Blastoise isn't bad at all. Uh, okay, let's think about this. Let's go... Mm, I don't know if I want to leave Blastoise because I think... No, I think we do leave Blastoise. I think we leave Blastoise to Lecky. Bring Landon back in Zation. Then we don't have Incineroar, but do we need Incineroar in this one? Incineroar is nice against the Metagross, but I think the ground immunity may provide a little bit better support in general. So we'll lock in with these four and we'll see how we get on against a Lorenzo in our third one today. Hopefully we can get the three peat. I feel like we've had some good games today, so hopefully this one doesn't let us down and we can get another W. That would be good, but uh, even if we don't, it's no no harm. It's always nice to see how a team performs in different scenarios, and I think Veltal's a really good shout at the minute, you know. Um, there's not many players really utilising it, but uh, when it is being played, it, it, it is doing a really decent job. Okay, well, Veltal and Metagross, so we could potentially shell smash here. We could shell smash. I don't know if it's worth it. I think it might be worth just going for residual damage um, straight off the bat. If I'm completely honest with you, I think get the residual damage kind of chipping away. See what this Evalto does. I don't know if it stays in. I think it probably... I need to see what uh, we've got. Volt switch. We need a Volt switch out on the Metagross. I think I'm going to double up in the Metagross here. Is Ivaldo just going to snarl? Potentially, it potentially snarls. Where we could have potentially got uh, a shell smash off. But I think it may be getting greedy. And against such offensive kind of powerhouse Pokemon, sometimes not always the best method. You know, we've got no way to kind of reduce the attack damage on the, um, the Metagross with a clear body. So we can't really cycle Intimidate as freely as we like. Um, but... We can make some strides for sure. Like the Electro, the Volt Switch will do some nice damage as well as that kind of GMAX Cannonade or whatever it's called. Hydro Cannon, Cannonade. Ooh, Sucker Punch. Ooh, in the Metagross. Oof. 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 <laughs> There's so much damage. It's not the Pokemon you want to be Sucker Punching with, to be honest. Uh, okay, well. I don't know if this Metagross is going to have much time left on the field, especially if they go for a Max Quake, which I'm kind of expecting them to go into the, the Regilecki with. They may go for a Steel Spike. May do, but um, we'll see. I don't think they're going to be able... They're not going to be taking down the Blastoise this turn, let's just say that. And uh, we are going to be hitting before them as well, which makes a huge difference. I don't think this takes it down. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. It's, it's gone, though. It is gone. We get the crit. Wow, that is that is fortunate. That is fortunate. It goes for the max quake, but it doesn't really make any difference, you know. We get the residual <laughs> damage on the belt, so this is a terrible turn for my opponent. I do feel a little bit bad. The crit makes a big difference there, because Metagross would be still sticking around on the field, of course, uh, this next turn. But that is just removed it completely. The Sucker Punch, though, from the Evelta onto it. You know, you've got the, the Dark Aura boost as well. With that, when it works, it works, I'm guessing. But, you know, you, you, you generally don't want to be doing too much damage to your uh, partner in Pokemon when you're pro activating those weakness policies. You know, you want to kind of mitigate that as, uh, as best possible. So, Aleki coming onto the field now. Um, I mean... It's difficult for my opponent, really, isn't it? Because we can just we can just earthquake and just max guard, and even if it's sashed, it goes down, and then it just leaves Evaltal or Regieleki to come in and deal with really at the end game. Um, yeah, but I didn't expect I didn't expect the sucker punch to come out from the uh, from the Evaltal, but it definitely made it a little bit easier for me for me to deal with. Um, come on, come on, come on, okay, baiting us in, baiting us in to get rid of this Landorus. It's not a bad play, not a bad play at all, the Incineral coming in. What are we going to see the Evelto do? Go for a Snarl, Weaken, or just go for like something like a, a Dark Pulse or something. Uh, 
guess we could have Earthquake, but the, the extra damage we don't need to. We don't need to do the extra damage to Blastoise when it's, it's a bit unnecessary, isn't it? You know? Yeah, that's just not. But I think even minus one, be able to take down the, the Incineroar. The next turn, after um, after another snarl, just with the residual damage as well, the, the Incineroar is going to take you, it's definitely going to be in range. It should be. Well, it's a Citrus Berry, so maybe not. But definitely one more turn. The G-Max Cannonade. Is it G-Max Cannonade? Cannonade, that's it. Okay, we'll click into that. Um... I think we just bring in Zation here, you know. I don't really fear anything from the Incineroar at this point. Snarl's not really going to affect Zation. I doubt the Avalto's got a way to hit Zation for very good damage. And then we've only got the Aleki to kind of deal with at the end, which comes in and will take one turn. If we can get rid of the Incineroar here, we'll take one turn of the, um, the G-Max Cannonade residual water damage, the Whirlpool damage that comes out. So... Yeah, I mean, we get lucky. We get we get fortunate, for sure, uh, turn one with the Metagross. It, it would have been a different game. It would have been a more difficult game without uh, being able to remove the, the Metagross like we did. We did call the max move, though, you know. Um, so we would have been in a good position that second turn to take it out anyway. Or at least put a bit more pressure on uh, to remove it from the field. While the, the cannonade kind of doesn't really allow you the room uh, to do that, that sort of thing, you know. You've got to kind of... Uh, make the most of your turns, especially if you're low health, because otherwise it's just going to knock you out. So there's a Snarl, there's a Fake Out, and the last turn of Cannonade coming out. Such a cool animation. Probably one of my favourites, you know. Uh, not quite enough to get the Incineroar, but the residual damage will be enough um, to take the, uh, the Incineroar down. It's just nuts how much this residual damage does. I can't see this carrying over, like these G-Max, I know Dynamax and Gigantamax probably won't carry over into like Generation 9, but I couldn't see these effects carrying over like they are right now, even if they did, I think they would readjust them a little bit, I think the residual damage is like far too much, but that's just my opinion, and I think we might see a forfeit, because it's, it's just the easy switch for, uh, it's not the easy switch for us here, but I mean, you know, we make a switch into Landorus, uh, we go for Behemoth Blade into Eveltal, and then Landorus just beats Aleki because Aleki can't do anything to Landorus. So we'll see. Uh, the Aleki probably targets down into Zation here, though. It make more sense, which then does free up a little bit of room for something like Blastoise to maybe get a turn off here. But I don't really feel like we need to risk it at this point. Uh, we've got the Assault Vest on Landorus to come in. It's going to be able to take attacks if that is special. Um, Evalto, uh, pretty easily. Zacian, you're not going to worry about the Electro Web or any dog type attacks coming out anyway, so it'll be alright. Not far play. Yeah. That still, that still stings, right? That still does a lot of damage, especially when we're on plus one, you know. Um, I don't know if that's Black Glass is boosted or not, but uh, it still does a lot of damage. Um, but like I say, Able to get rid of the Uvalto, and now uh, Landorus can just um, remove the Aleki from the field because the uh, the G Max Cannonade can be that last little bit of chip that we needed. The other option there would have been to just go after the Reggie Aleki, but I think a more clear win con for us definitely is the uh, the, the Landorus here, where the, the Aleki just doesn't have a, a, a hope and heck to uh, to kind of beat. But uh, very good game, Lorenzo. A little bit unfortunate with the Metagross, but I do think it probably just quickened up the uh, the result in the end anyway. So, very good game. Now we'll hop over and get you fine people the rental code for today's team. <laughs> Okay, here is the rental code for today's team, friends. I hope if you do try it out, as always, you have a lot of fun with it. And if you do try it out, please let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on the team and how much fun you've had with it and success with it, of course, as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It has been a fun one. We've had some really nice games. Good games. Got all our opponents from today uh, again. And um, yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Don't want to drag this on too much longer. So have a great rest of your day, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.